my friends, was Mickey Mouse in the James Bond game GoldenEye 007. Now you instinctively might be shouting, no, that sounds completely ridiculous, why would Mickey Mouse be in a James Bond game? Yet at least one man, the OP of an r slash Mandela Effect Reddit thread in January 2022, seems to remember Mickey Mouse being in GoldenEye. And surprisingly, he may actually be onto something. No, really. Whether or not the GoldenEye developers tried to sneak Mickey Mouse into GoldenEye 007 sent me down an insane rabbit hole, one that I'm going to take you down now. So pour yourself a warm beverage, my friends, get cozy, and let's dive on in. Here we go! It all started one night chatting with GoldenEye great Perfect Ace. It may not come as a surprise that oftentimes the longtime GoldenEye speedrunners hang out online here and there, speedrunning, exploring the odds and ends of GoldenEye, Perfect Dark, and other related games, looking for obscurities or new strategies or whatever one might find. We were checking out old GameShark codes to try on EverDrive and see what weird glitches or possible speedrun discoveries might be out there. And we came across a post from January 2022 about Goldeneye on the r slash Mandela Effect subreddit by a user named G14Classified97, whom I will refer to in the rest of this video as OP. The post read this. Goldeneye 007 N64, Depot Level Graffiti on Crate. All Goldeneye 007 lovers out there, the graffiti in question is the Mickey Mouse one. Do you guys recall a Mickey Mouse graffiti on the back of the depot level, towards the end, where there are some crates? This graffiti here, and he links to an image of a pixelated Mickey Mouse looking graphic, seen on screen now. It is now missing. I played the hell out of that game like many others here back in the 90s, and I know it used to be on one of the red crates on the second pile near the end. I found out a couple of years ago now that this asset was never used. And please, before anyone comments on how it was copyright infringement, etc, etc, it does make sense. Even back in the day, I wondered if it was Mickey Mouse in Fantasia or a knockoff different enough that they could get away with it. Especially in such low res. Comments, please. One replier wrote, I played this game many times and I never saw a Mickey Mouse. WTF LMAO. To which OP replied, It's funny, I'm a huge GoldenEye fan and was going through the GoldenEye decoded page years ago, delving into all the media and immediately recognized the pixelated graphic, but was perplexed as to why it said, unused Mickey Mouse graffiti. It bothered me for a couple of years until I discovered the Mandela effect for myself around 2017 and decided to finally post it. I would give a kidney on how positive I am this existed once in the game. I hope someone else remembers it as well. Another noteworthy replier in this thread asked OP, If it's in the game files, maybe you accessed it through GameShark somehow. With GameShark, you could go to unaccessible areas and pass through walls and look at the inside of objects where textures might be hidden. You might even have the exact location confused. GameShark often gave you access to unique easter eggs and not everything would necessarily be documented if you need a GameShark, but there were definitely books and web pages showing people's discoveries. To which OP replied, I never owned one, nor a Game Genie. Very strange. I wonder if anyone else remembers other stuff. For example, on YouTube, the GoldenEye soundtrack, a couple of people commented how the Aztec level music changed. They mentioned something about a Spanish guitar string during the intro, though the music seemed the same to me. Now, Aztec music aside, this discussion immediately intrigued Ace and I, since we had not ever seen such a piece of graffiti that looked like Mickey Mouse. Or had we? It might be unsurprising to hear that speedrunners well, we're not always paying attention to the minutiae of the game, and things not relevant to speedrunning, like the various graffiti strewn throughout the depot stage. We knew that there was graffiti located on various walls and shipping containers, but we'd have been hard-pressed to describe it in any meaningful way. 
You could have told me that any old character was on the wall there, and I wouldn't have been able to outright deny it. So I start to look around at the various graffiti strewn throughout the depot stage for myself. Ace was doing some searching, and came across the old school Blogspot post, which OP seemed to reference in one of his Reddit posts. This Blogspot is still up, and it was last updated in 2022, a blog called GoldenEye Decoded. One of his blogs from May 2015 shows this, graffiti textures with four pictures, psycho in text letters, a weird man sticking his tongue out, a man wearing a fedora hat, and the Mickey Mouse texture. Underneath the Mickey Mouse graffiti, it says unused Mickey Mouse texture, but it doesn't say the same under any of the other three graffiti. The plot thickens. I was able to find the first three graffiti pretty easily, strewn about the depot stage, appearing here and there and anywhere, but there was simply no sign of the Mickey Mouse texture. Perhaps it was unused after all. I did find this other texture which seemed kind of similar, spiritually, it has the same kind of vibe as the Mickey Mouse wearing a hat, but it's definitely not Mickey Mouse. Ace and I would then consult another reference guide, the Cutting Room Floor, a wiki site dedicated to uncovering and sharing this sort of cut material or rare oddities in video games, and has a lot of cool stuff. On the depot stage, it purports that there was supposed to be a big red truck by this trailer here, or an extra desk by the safe, little things like that, which have unused pads or code remnants in the game. It also then shows the tiniest of tiny Mickey Mouse screenshots, reading, among the textures for the graffitis that can be seen throughout the level is one that depicts Mickey Mouse in his sorcerer outfit from Fantasia with red hat. The writing of this line is somewhat unclear. It kind of implies that it is in the game among the rest of the graffiti textures, but then again, it's on the unused stuff page, so that in itself implies the graphic didn't make its way into the final game. In any manner, this was at least further evidence, another source, that the Mickey Mouse graffiti was indeed in the game at some point, or at least existed deep within the game files. Whether or not it was used in any version of the game is another question, but suffice to say that OP at least wasn't completely hallucinating some kind of dream, and there's at least something to substantiate his old memory. It's actually quite easy to edit the code of GoldenEye slightly to make the texture visible in-game. You're seeing this on screen now, a simple slight ROM hack enabling the code again with the Mickey Mouse visible on various depot containers. This is a simple ROM of GoldenEye for N64, slightly edited and played on a Nintendo 64. So it's definitely there, able to be pulled out if you know what you're doing, but this still explains no better how our friend OP remembered it so vividly from his childhood. Another important fact to consider that may or may not be relevant is that the developer of GoldenEye, Rare, would also develop at least two Mickey Mouse racing games around this same era. Mickey's Racing Adventure for Game Boy Color in 1999, and Mickey's Speedway USA for the Nintendo 64 in 2000. These were officially licensed by Disney, and thus Rare would have had access to certain assets, like possibly sprites of Mickey Mouse. Now, GoldenEye came out in 1997, and so it's hard to know if Rare had any of these sprites or assets contemporaneously with GoldenEye's development, but it certainly makes it plausible. Not to mention, it's well documented that the GoldenEye devs would slip fun things like self-references into the game. Dr. Doak being the developer David Doak, and the statue gate reading the initials BJ for B. Jones are two of the most well-known examples, but they inserted numerous similar things that later got removed when caught by the Nintendo overlords. Could the GoldenEye devs have inserted the Mickey Mouse graffiti texture either as a joke or a test or a placeholder only for it to be removed later? but the texture still remained deep within the game's files for one reason or another. Could it have made its way into some build of the game that may or may not have been publicly released? Well, here's where it gets really weird. The Mickey Mouse graffiti does not naturally appear in any Nintendo 64 cartridge as far as we can tell, nor does it appear on the Nintendo Switch or Xbox re-releases in 2023. 
However, if you start up the leaked Xbox Live Arcade remake of the game, which was originally planned to come out in 2007 and finally leaked online in 2021, the Mickey Mouse graffiti is present on Depot. Yes, this was truly shocking and makes absolutely no sense at all. How did it end up in this leaked build from 2007, which finally made its way online more than a decade later? Anyone who played the XBLA leak would have played this version of the game with the Mickey Mouse graffiti on Depot, whether they knew it and noticed it or not. My best guess as to how this happened is that, yeah, there was indeed a time in development when builds of the game had the Mickey Mouse texture in place for one reason or another, either as a placeholder or a joke, or an attempt for the devs to sneak it in, or as a genuine graffiti that the devs wanted to use before it got removed. And by random chance, it was this random build, which was the one that ended up getting worked on to be enhanced and ported over for the Xbox remaster, which never ended up getting officially published. Of course, it's likely that if the XBLA version did get officially released in 2007, the Mickey Mouse graffiti would probably have been removed. But now, this leaked version of this game is just this sort of weird relic, a sort of time capsule of this very specific build of Goldeneye that happens to include the Mickey Mouse texture, one which our OP apparently remembers being in a Nintendo 64 version of the game well before the time of the XBLA game, or even the Xbox itself, was even conceived. But keep in mind that this XBLA leaked version made its way onto the internet in February 2021, roughly a full year before OP wrote his Reddit thread. So could OP have played the leaked XBLA version and combined memories of seeing it in that version, along with seeing it on various websites back in the day, and maybe even mixed it up with other graffiti which can be found on Depot in the N64 version? Could this just all be a misremembered memory? At some point after looking into this a little bit, one of the GoldenEye speedrun community members named Big Tommy reached out to the OP to dig a little deeper and try to learn more about this strange phenomenon. Tommy asked OP whether or not he played the leaked XBLA version, and perhaps that's where the memory came from. OP responded by writing, No, I have not played the remastered leaked version. I did download it, but never bothered to run it. I would love a screenshot of the XBLA version. I have the memory of it because it was super weird seeing licensed crossovers like that, so that anchored the memory. Of course, when I visited the developer's website and the page stated that it was an unused game asset, it took me a while to process. GoldenEye was the only N64 game I had for a couple of years, and me and my brothers played the hell out of it. We memorized every crack and nook in that game. Unfortunately, I sold my last copy of GoldenEye and only run it through EverDrive now. And that's pretty much where we're at in regards to correspondence with OP and his presentation of his memory and story. So, what's the conclusion to this all? Well, in my opinion, there are basically three distinct possibilities which I think could explain why OP believes he saw the Mickey Mouse graffiti in his childhood N64 GoldenEye. So here are those three theories. Number one is the simple misplaced memory. Perhaps OP saw these similar looking graffiti back in his youth playing the game, and then he came across blog posts or similar posts mentioning the Mickey Mouse graffiti, Maybe he got some wires crossed in his memory, and thus all of a sudden, he remembered the Mickey Mouse graffiti being the one in his childhood game. This is probably the most conventional explanation for any who are skeptical of the Mandela Effect phenomenon. Perhaps when he plays on EverDrive, he somehow got a build of the game with the Mickey Mouse texture enabled. Or perhaps he witnessed the texture while watching a stream of the XBLA version, given he claims to have not played the game himself. Who knows, but this possibility suggests that one way or another, OP got his wires crossed, and that's that. The second possibility is this other side of the Mandela Effect coin, where an OP's memory is correct. The Mickey Mouse graffiti was there, something strange happened in our universe in the years since, and now all of a sudden, it's gone, shifted into the void, only existing as a memory for OP, and a relic as a piece of cut content for those who know the game's code well. 
Now, personally, I am skeptical of this interpretation of the Mandela Effect phenomenon. It's the kind of thing I would have wanted to believe more when I was younger, but these days I do try to be more rationally minded. That being said, OP did post his thread to our Mandela Effect, so I wanted to at least acknowledge this possibility. But there's a third theory which in my opinion is the most compelling and could realistically have happened without breaking any laws of physics or memory holes or anything like that. And back in OP's reddit thread, the most interesting comment was starting to get at something along these lines. If you've been around the GoldenEye community long enough, you'll know that every now and then, someone comes along saying something like, Hey, my cartridge says Facility Double Agent Best Time 48, which is faster than the world record. Did the person who owned the cartridge before me know some secret strategy which saves time on Facility? Did I get the world record years ago with a strategy I've since forgotten? The answer to these questions is always pretty simple. Someone on your cartridge previously used a Game Shark at some point, likely some combination of Game Shark codes including all objectives complete and walk through doors, and was able to get some best times saved into the game's end screens, which are far faster than anything conventionally possible with modern speedrun techniques. The game does save best times with cheats on if the cheats were Game Sharked in, but not if they come from the cheat menu. And so, you know, if you're just running through all the doors and all the objectives are already complete, it's very easy to beat all the world records and get some pretty insane best times saved onto your cartridge. So given that we know the Mickey Mouse graffiti does exist as a relic in the game's data, is it possible that OP's cartridge had code which activates the Mickey Mouse graffiti turned on by a Game Shark? without his knowledge, or by a previous owner of his cartridge. This definitely should be possible with a simple GameShark code, while the GameShark is plugged in, but I'm unsure if the Mickey Mouse graffiti would remain active once the GameShark is no longer plugged into the game. It does sound like something that is at least plausible, and could explain why OP remembers the graffiti being in his game, but no one else seems to share this same memory. Perhaps he is remembering correctly, and it was his unique childhood cartridge that had this texture activated for one reason or another. I once received a fascinating and tangentially related YouTube comment on another video about GoldenEye mysteries and oddities. Something that you might find interesting. I bought GoldenEye for the N64 when it was first released in the UK. The game was factory sealed. When I opened it up and loaded up the game, there was already a created save file with all the levels and sheets unlocked. Not sure how this happened, and I've never heard of a similar story. This frankly does sound outrageous, as in something so strange and should be almost impossible, yet it still sounds strangely possible. Like perhaps you got a cartridge that a developer played on and forgot to wipe before resealing. Or perhaps it was a used cartridge but shrink wrap sealed and appeared brand new and factory sealed. Who knows? The point is, it's definitely within the realm of possibility that our N64 cartridges could have been played or messed around with before they reached our hands back in the day. That much is true. And henceforth, it's at least possible that our OP, Mickey Mouse Graffiti Rememberer, experienced such a situation where his cartridge had the graffiti actively displayed in his game, and no one else did. So, my friends, what do you think about this all? Do you believe in the Mickey Mouse Goldeneye Mandela effect? Do you remember seeing the Mickey Mouse graffiti during your playthroughs of Goldeneye years ago? Do you think OP is just mixing up some memories, having seen the Mickey Mouse graffiti on various blogs over the years, or the XBLA leak version, and misremembered it as coming from his childhood? Or do you think that perhaps some strange circumstance led to him actually having a one-of-a-kind cartridge where the Mickey Mouse graffiti was indeed visible to him? It's a truly strange and unusual story, and I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Also, let me know if you have any of your own personal Mandela effects in video games, since those are simply so intriguing. And who knows, perhaps it'll become the subject of a future video. 
in the meantime, thank you all for watching, and I truly hope you enjoyed going down this rabbit hole with me tonight. Make sure to subscribe with notifications on so you never miss a new video. And if you want to support my work even more, you can check out Speedlore on Patreon for regular updates on my Speedlore series and the occasional exclusive bonus video. Alright, with all that being said, stay true my friends, and I'll see you in the next stream or video.